Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a paint style pattern using the new repeat feature in Adobe Illustrator CC. Now this new repeat feature in Adobe Illustrator CC is really quite handy. I just want to explore it in this video. These are some paint lines that I've created. So what I did was I went to the brush tool and I accessed some of the painterly brushes. So I'm going to the brushes panel here. I came down to the selector at the bottom here, went to artistic and then artistic paintbrush. This gives me access to a lot of paintbrush style brushes. And then I went to the swatches panel and chose a color or two to use. Let's just go and choose this sort of gray color. And now with this brush, I'm going to paint a brush line. I'm going to move it into my collection here, but I just wanted to show you how these are distinct brush lines. Now, if you were to create this pattern using the pattern make feature in Adobe Illustrator, what's going to happen is that as soon as you create this as a pattern, you're going to lose the brushes themselves. So you won't be able to make any changes to them because they'll end up being filled shapes and not brushes. Now for these very thick brushes, that's probably less of an issue. But if you're using watercolor style brushes, then that can be an issue because they have sort of more transparency built into them. So this is what the watercolor brushes look like. Let's just go and paint with one of those. And you'll see that they're very, very different. They've got this sort of translucency. And if they're expanded into filled shapes, they don't look nearly as good inside a pattern. So I think it's worth exploring the new pattern tool in Adobe Illustrator and particularly with these patterns where we want to perhaps keep the nature of the brushes. So I'm going to select over all of these brush strokes that I have. I'm going to choose object and then repeat and grid. This is the new feature in Adobe Illustrator on the desktop and it mirrors the one that's available in Illustrator on the iPad, although the two work a little bit differently to each other. If you're interested in how they work differently, I have a Skillshare class and I'll put a link to that in the description below. It's a four fee class. You'll need to be a Skillshare subscriber or sign up for Skillshare, but that will give you access to an entire class on this new feature, including some of the differences between the iPad and the desktop version, some of the ways they work differently, and some of the ways that you can work effectively with this particular tool. Now, this is my grid pattern. Let's go to Object, Repeat, and go to Options so we can set the options. I'm going to choose here Brick by Column, so we've offset these to a more interesting arrangement. Now, it's also possible to flip these so that they will behave a little bit differently. I'm thinking that this is probably a nice way to flip them. But you can experiment with different settings here to get different results. I'll click OK. And then I'm going to bring in the arrangement. So I want these to overlap better. And I can choose as much or as little overlap as I like. Now I'm going to leave the overlap a little bit large at this stage. I'm just going to bring in the edges of this design so it better fits my artboard. My artboard is scrapbook paper size. It's 864 by 864 pixels. If we were to export that using file, export, export as, choose JPEG as the export format, and then choose a high resolution of 300 PPI. We're going to end up with a document that is 3600 by 3600 pixels. That's scrapbook paper size at 300 DPI or PPI. So just be aware that starting a document at 864 by 864 is ideal. Now back to this pattern, you see that I've got a sort of hole in it. So I'm going to fill that hole. I'm going to go to the selection tool and double click on this design. What I want to do is isolate these pattern pieces. Now this is unlike the regular pattern make tool in Adobe Illustrator, because in this case you can select any of these elements as being the one that you're going to edit. You're just going to add to it. And that's fine. Every one of these is selectable. Just going to zoom in here so I can see a bit more clearly where I am working. I'm going to the brush tool. I'm going to ignore this setting at the moment because right now it's telling me that of all these brushes that are selected, it can't find a single color. Well, that's quite right because there's lots of colors here. But I'm just going to draw in a brush stroke down here to sort of fill this gap. So let's add a brush stroke here. 
Now the trick is to find that brush stroke. I think this is it here. And then we're going to change its color. I'm going to make it this sort of gray color. It will be a bit easier to work with then. And I can bring it in. You can see here that it's pushing the design out of the way. So if I want to use it to fill a gap, I need to find the gap I want to fill and then just place it there. Now this is still a brush stroke, so I could rotate it. I am actually going to rotate it around and see if I can find a better fill spot for it. I think if I bring in the edges of the design, this is going to fill quite well. So Control or Command Zero to zoom back out. We've got a breadcrumb trail here to get out. You can just continue to click out of the design or you can just press the escape key. Let's reselect the pattern here and just bring in this horizontal arrangement so that things are closing up a little bit. Now I've got a bit of space behind my pattern, but I'm actually pretty happy with that because I think I'm going to fill it with a solid fill underneath this design. So I'm going to add a rectangle that is 864 by 864. I'll center it on the artboard. I'll fill it with a color right now. It's got a gray stroke, so let's just fill it with gray. We can change the color in just a minute. I'm going to the layers panel and I'm going to move it below this grid repeat. So now it's filling up the gaps in the grid repeat. If I want to change its color with it selected, I like to use the Recolor Artwork dialog because that allows me to come in here and just select a different fill color by just sort of experimenting with it. What color do I want to use here? So I'm thinking that a sort of purple will blend in quite well with this and give it that sort of painterly look. So as I said, I've now got a document that is scrapbook paper size. If it was not a small enough pattern, if I wanted the pattern a bit smaller, I can just bring in the corner here that's making the pattern smaller and then just reveal more of it. This pattern repeat tool is very different to the pattern make tool in Adobe Illustrator and I like it a lot. I think it has a lot of benefits and these sorts of painterly designs it works particularly well for. So let's just save that out as a sheet of scrapbook paper file. Export, we're going to choose export as. We're going to make sure it's set to JPEG. We're going to click use artboards. This is important because this means that if there's any excess of this pattern over the edge of the artboard, it's going to be clipped away. Perfect. I'll click export. I'm going to choose high, uh, 300 ppi as the resolution. And I like to sell high quality scrapbook paper. So I'm going to make sure that the quality is maximum and click OK. And now let's go and have a look at our exported scrapbook paper. Here it is. You can see that it's 3600 by 3600 in dimension. If I right click it and choose properties, then we're going to see from the details panel that it is a 300 DPI document. So this is perfectly arranged and set up as scrapbook paper. If there's something you don't like about it, it's probably going to be its name. It's easy enough just to change the name, but you don't have to do any more formatting or any change of resolution because that is being exported at scrapbook paper size. Now before we finish up, I have more Illustrator training, as I said, at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 260 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare link that contains a deal at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine will be better. I also have Illustrator training at Udemy.com, and there's a referral link for every one of these courses in the description below. Please feel free to share these with family, friends, and co-workers. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you'll explore the use of this new repeat tool in Adobe Illustrator. I think it's really, really impressive. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell, and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.